Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the derivative of hyperbolic sine of 8x. And so we have all of our derivative rules over here for all the different hyperbolic functions. And so for this specific derivative, we are going to need to know the derivative of the hyperbolic sine function, which we have right here. We know that the derivative of hyperbolic sine of some function u is equal to hyperbolic cosine of that same function times the derivative of that function u prime. And so in this case, our inside function u is 8x. And so if we use that rule, the derivative of this function will be equal to hyperbolic cosine of 8x times the derivative of 8x. And the derivative of 8x is just 8 because when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to its coefficient. And so we'll multiply by 8. And so then we have that the derivative is equal to 8 times hyperbolic cosine of 8x. And that is the derivative of this function. Next, we want to find the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of x to the fourth power divided by 4. And so to find this derivative, we need to know the derivative rule for hyperbolic cosine, which we have over here. The derivative of hyperbolic cosine of some function u is equal to the hyperbolic sine function of that same function u times the derivative of u. And so for this function, u is equal to x to the fourth power. But before we use that derivative rule, note that the derivative is not going to affect this constant multiple. And so this would be equal to 1 fourth times the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of x to the fourth power. And so then what we can do is use that derivative rule and we'll have that this is equal to 1 fourth times hyperbolic sine of that same function x to the fourth power, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of that function x to the fourth power. And so if we use the power rule for this function, we multiply the exponent down and then subtract one from the exponent. And so we'll have four times x to the third power. Okay, and so then to simplify this, notice that we have four and one fourth. Those are going to cancel out to just be one. And so if we simplify, this is equal to x cubed times hyperbolic sine of x to the fourth power. And that is the derivative of this function. For our next example, we have that f of x is equal to x times hyperbolic sine minus hyperbolic cosine. And we want to find f prime, the derivative of this function. And so in order to take the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use the derivative rules for hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. But before we do that, notice that this first term here is a product of two functions, right? We have x times hyperbolic sine of x. And so because we have that product of two functions, we are going to need to use the product rule for derivatives. And so if you don't quite remember the product rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. But if we use it, we will have that f prime of x is equal to that first function x times the derivative of the second function, which is hyperbolic sine of x. And so the derivative of hyperbolic sine of x will be hyperbolic cosine of x and then times the derivative of x. But that would just be one, right? The derivative of x is one. And so the derivative here will just be hyperbolic cosine of x. And then we will add that to our second function, hyperbolic sine of x times the derivative of the first function. And the derivative of x, like we just said, is one. And so multiply by one. And so that is the end of the product rule that we used for this term. But then we still need to take the derivative of negative hyperbolic cosine of x. And so we will subtract the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of x, which is hyperbolic sine of x. And if we multiplied by the derivative of that inside function, again, that would just be the derivative of x, which is just one. And so we don't need to worry about multiplying by one. So we'll just have hyperbolic sine of x. All right, so now we have taken the derivative of each of these terms. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to x times hyperbolic cosine of x plus hyperbolic sine of x minus hyperbolic sine of x. But now notice that we have a positive hyperbolic sine and a negative hyperbolic sine. And so those are going to cancel out to just be zero. And so our final answer is that f prime of x is equal to x times hyperbolic cosine of x. That is the derivative of our function f of x. Next, we have the derivative of two times hyperbolic tangent of x divided by two. And so to take the derivative of this function, we will need to use the derivative rule of the hyperbolic tangent function. And that is equal to hyperbolic secant squared of that same inside function u times the derivative of that inside function. 
And so in this case, our inside function is x divided by two. And so keeping that in mind, we will have that this is equal to that constant multiple two times the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent function. And so that is going to be hyperbolic secant squared of that same inside function times the derivative of that inside function. And for x divided by two, remember that that is the same as one half times x. And so the derivative of x to the first power would just be equal to that coefficient of one half. And so the derivative is just one half. Okay, but then notice that we have two times one half. And so those are going to cancel out to just become one. And so we're just multiplying this function by one. And so we have that the derivative will be equal to hyperbolic secant squared of x divided by two. And so that is the derivative of this function. Next, we have the derivative of x squared times hyperbolic cotangent of x. And so in this case, we're going to need to know the derivative rule for hyperbolic cotangent, which we have right here, the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent of some function u is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant squared of that same function u times the derivative u prime. But before we can use that derivative rule, notice that our function here in the derivative is a product of two functions. And so similar to one of our previous examples, we are going to need to use the product rule for derivatives in order to find this derivative. And so I'll bring the product rule back up on the screen here, and we will use that again. And we will have that this is equal to the first function, x squared times the derivative of the second function. And so using the derivative rule for hyperbolic cotangent, we will have that that is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant squared x. And then we would multiply by the derivative of that inside function. But since it's just x, the derivative is one. And so we don't need to worry about multiplying by one. And so then we will add that to our second function, hyperbolic cotangent times the derivative of x squared. And so the derivative of x squared is 2x if we use the power rule by multiplying the exponent down and then subtracting one from the exponent. So we have two times x to the first power. Okay, and so then if we simplify this, we will have that that is equal to negative x squared times hyperbolic cosecant squared x plus two x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. And that will be the derivative of this function. Next, we have that y is equal to hyperbolic tangent of hyperbolic cotangent. And we wanna find y prime, the derivative of this function. And so to take the derivative of this function, we will need to know both derivative rules for the hyperbolic tangent function and the hyperbolic cotangent function. And so since that hyperbolic cotangent function is inside the hyperbolic tangent function, we will need to use the chain rule and so we're going to start by taking the derivative of the outside function, the hyperbolic tangent function. And so remember the derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant squared. And so we will have that y prime is equal to hyperbolic secant squared of that same inside function, hyperbolic cotangent of x. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And so the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent is going to be negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. And in this case, since u would just be equal to x, u prime would just be one, right? The derivative of x is one. And so we'd just be multiplying by one. And so we don't need to worry about that. We will just have that the derivative is negative hyperbolic cosecant squared of x. All right, and so then if we simplify, I'm just going to reorder the multiplication of these two terms and we'll have that this is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant squared x times hyperbolic secant squared of hyperbolic cotangent x. Okay, and so that will be the derivative of this function. For our next example, we wanna find the derivative of hyperbolic secant of x divided by x. And so for this derivative, we are going to need to use the quotient rule because we have a quotient of two functions, right? We have hyperbolic secant divided by x. And so if you don't quite remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. But if we use it, we'll have that this is equal to the denominator function x times the derivative of the numerator function. And so the derivative of hyperbolic secant of x will require using this derivative rule here that the derivative of hyperbolic secant of u is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of u times hyperbolic tangent of u times the derivative of u, u prime. Now in this case, u is just equal to x. So once again, the derivative of x is just one. And so we're just gonna have negative 
hyperbolic secant of x times hyperbolic tangent of x. And then for the next part of the quotient rule, we will subtract the numerator function, which is hyperbolic secant of x times the derivative of the denominator function. And the derivative of x, once again, is just one. And so then we will divide by the denominator function squared. And so we will have x squared. Okay, and so if we simplify, this will be equal to negative x times hyperbolic secant of x times hyperbolic tangent of x minus hyperbolic secant of x divided by x squared. And so then there's one more thing that we can do here to simplify this derivative, and that is to notice that both of these terms in the numerator have negative hyperbolic secant in them. And so if we pull that out of each of these terms, we will have that this is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of x times x times hyperbolic tangent plus one, and that will be divided by x squared, right? So I just pulled negative hyperbolic secant out of this term, and so we're just left with positive x times hyperbolic tangent, which is what we have right here, and then we pulled negative hyperbolic secant out of this term, and so since that's all that was there, we are left with plus one, all right? And so then this is the derivative of this function. Next up, we wanna find the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x. And so first things first, let's rewrite this function in a different way, right? That would be the same as having the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant of x quantity cubed. And so what that allows us to do is see how we're going to take the derivative of this function via the chain rule, right? We have an inside function of that hyperbolic cosecant function and an outside function of the quantity cubed. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function, which is going to require using the power rule, right? So we're going to multiply this exponent down in front of this function and then subtract one from that exponent. And so we'll have that this is equal to three times hyperbolic cosecant of x to the power of three minus one. And then we will multiply by the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant function. And so if we go to our rules over here, we have the rule for the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant function, and that is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotangent of u times the derivative of u, u prime. Now in this case, u is just equal to x, and so u prime will just be one because the derivative of x is one, and so we don't need to worry about multiplying by the derivative. And so if we take the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant of x, we're just going to have negative hyperbolic cosecant of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. Okay, and so then if we simplify this, we'll have three minus one is equal to two, and so that exponent will just be two, and then I'm going to bring this negative to the front, I'm just gonna multiply it by three instead, and so we'll have negative three times hyperbolic cosecant x squared. However, notice that we have another hyperbolic cosecant right here, and so we can actually multiply into this quantity, and we will have the quantity cubed because we have three of these hyperbolic cosecant functions being multiplied together. And then we'll multiply by hyperbolic cotangent of x, and so we will have hyperbolic cotangent of x. All right, and so then one more thing that we could do to simplify this is just how we changed hyperbolic cosecant cubed x to be the quantity hyperbolic cosecant cubed. We could reverse that process and change this right here to be hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x rather than the whole quantity cubed. It just looks a little bit nicer. And so I'll do that here real quick. We'll have negative three times hyperbolic cosecant cubed of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. And that will be the derivative of this function. Next we have y is equal to hyperbolic sine of 5x times hyperbolic cosine of 5x. And we wanna find the derivative dy dx. And so to take the derivative of this function here, we're going to need to use the product rule because we have a product of two functions. Right, we have hyperbolic sine of 5x times hyperbolic cosine of 5x. And so I'll bring the product rule back up on the screen here for you to reference. And if we use it, we will have that dy dx is equal to our first function, hyperbolic sine of 5x times the derivative of the second function. And so the derivative of hyperbolic cosine, if we go to our derivative rules, is equal to hyperbolic sine of that same inside function times the derivative of that inside function. And so we will have hyperbolic sine of 5x times a derivative of 5x, which a derivative of 5x will just be five because when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to the coefficient. And so we will have times five 
And then we will add that to our second function, hyperbolic cosine of 5x times the derivative of the first function. And the derivative of hyperbolic sine, if we go to our derivative rules, is hyperbolic cosine of that same inside function times the derivative of that inside function. And so we will have hyperbolic cosine of 5x times the derivative of 5x, which just like we found earlier is 5. All right, and so that's it for the product rule. And so if we're going to simplify this derivative, notice that we have two hyperbolic sine of 5x functions. And so we can combine those to have hyperbolic sine squared of 5x. And we can do the same for these two hyperbolic cosine functions that have the same inside function of 5x. And so what we'll have is that y prime is equal to 5 times hyperbolic sine squared of 5x plus 5 times hyperbolic cosine squared of 5x. And that will be the derivative of this function. For our last example, we have that g of x is equal to the natural log of hyperbolic tangent of x. And we want to find the derivative g prime of x. And so in order to take the derivative of this function, we will need to know how to take the derivative of a natural log function. And so if we remember the derivative of the natural log of some function u is equal to one divided by u times u prime, the derivative of that function u. And so in this case, u is equal to hyperbolic tangent. And so g prime of x will be equal to one divided by hyperbolic tangent of x times the derivative of hyperbolic tangent of x. And so if we go to our derivative rules down to the derivative rule for hyperbolic tangent, we have that it is equal to hyperbolic secant squared of u times the derivative of u. Now in this case, u is just x, and so that derivative is just one because the derivative of x is just one. And so we're just going to be multiplying by hyperbolic secant squared x. And so we're almost done. You could choose to multiply this function into the top and then call it a day. You could say that g prime of x is just equal to hyperbolic secant squared x divided by hyperbolic tangent x. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is to switch one divided by hyperbolic tangent of x into hyperbolic cotangent of x. Because just like with the trig functions, how one divided by tangent is equal to cotangent, for hyperbolic functions, one divided by hyperbolic tangent is equal to hyperbolic cotangent. And so g prime of x will be equal to hyperbolic cotangent times hyperbolic secant squared x. Okay, and so that is the derivative of this function. And so with that, that is all I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.